Hey guys, Josh with the Adept Ape channel, and in this video we're going to be discussing what is an engine derate. And I usually get this question when someone has a check engine light and they say, hey, my power seems less as well, and it might not seem related to the code they have. And I'll usually say, well, your engine's probably derating. And they'll usually say, what does that mean? So let's first go into what is a derate, when they come on, and the history of them. So an engine derate is typically on an electronic diesel engine, meaning you don't have an old mechanical fuel pump, you have some sort of ECM that's controlling the fuel to the engine, and a code is coming on, or the ECM is seeing something it doesn't like. Now, particularly on the CATS, because that's where my specialty is, this can be from a wide range of things, but typically on the older non-emissions engines, this is gonna be low oil pressure, high coolant temp, low coolant level, things like this. And what it's gonna do is the engine's going to reduce the max horsepower output of your engine. So you might still have full RPM range, but it, it can reduce your total horsepower and it can reduce the vehicle speed to a set point. Now what this is varies from engine to engine and what the code is, but let's get into the history and why this feature is even on most of your engines. So back before there were computers that controlled your ECM and your injectors, you had an old mechanical fuel pump typically on your diesel engine. And this controlled the amount of fuel strictly mechanically to each injector. Now you might have had a mechanical unit injector type setup, but it was pretty much mechanical. There was no electronic oversight for the most part on your fuel limit for the engine and the horsepower being put out by it. Now, once they started adding engine ECMs, you know, electronic control modules, they can control the amount of fuel. And the ECM controlled the timing of the fuel. It controlled pretty much everything that was important for the engine making power. And in the early days, there was a parameter you could set. Now, this is particular to CAT engines, but all electronic diesel engines had some sort of D-rate feature. And what this is is basically, hey, do you want your engine to be either a warning if let's say your coolant temperature is getting too high, or do you want a derate, or do you want a shutdown? Now obviously warning is a check engine light and usually an accompanying buzzer, and a shutdown, it shuts your engine down for you. And a derate is where you'll get your check engine light on and typically the buzzer, but it'll reduce engine horsepower and it can reduce the total vehicle speed or your upper speed limit. Now, the amount of percentage of decrease would vary from engine to engine. If you had a C7, the max D rate, let's say on a KAL serial number, would be your maximum horsepower would be limited to 120 horsepower. Now, you might have a 350 horsepower RV engine, but if it's limited to 120, that's quite a reduction in horsepower. And mostly this was there to say, hey, you know, you have a problem with your engine, you really need to check this out, but it's not gonna shut down. And that was something that was programmable. Now remember, the early electronic engines were non-emissioned engines. They didn't have any sort of EGR, they didn't have a DPF. We're talking late 90s up till the mid 2000s. So once you started getting into emissions controls, which the early C15s with the twin turbos, the non-regen emission ones, they had things called IVAs, intake valve actuators, sometimes called variable valve actuators. And this was an emissions control, and CAT was using this to get around using EGR for the time being. Now, other manufacturers used EGR, Cummins, for instance, and, and this is when they started using D-rates as more of a punishment instead of a helpful hint or a engine protecting mode because if you have an emissions problem most people just keep driving and driving and not notice any problem with the engine because it's not actually typically hurting the engine if you have an emissions problem or an IVA not working but basically the manufacturers being pushed by the EPA said hey we need to punish you if you are running this engine and you're not fixing a check engine light or your emission controls are not working. So they started having mandatory D rates. So certain codes like your IVA is not working on the CATS would start giving you a D rate code. So the engine might be running completely mechanically fine, but if you had a IVA code, you could get a D rate. So if you had low horsepower, you might have a check engine light that, like I said, is not 
contributing to a loss in performance, but the ECM is derating you, which means it can limit top vehicle speed and it can limit the amount of power that engine will make by restricting fuel to the injectors. Now, when D rates really started becoming a problem and really were more of a punishment than a protective feature was once it started getting into the 2007 engines, which this is really when you started getting DPFs, when you started getting heavy EGR flow. And this is when they started using your ECM to punish you a lot. And a lot of these regen engines, the DPF, heavy emissions engines have a lot of emission problems. And a lot of people would just keep driving them if the engine's operating normally. But the manufacturers said, hey, we're going to punish you if one of our products breaks on you and you're getting an emissions code. So they would heavily derate your engine with an accompanying check engine light. It would even get to the point where certain codes could actually shut down your engine. Now, while these emission codes could shut down your engine, you still had the option of having the optional derate feature for your oil pressure and your coolant temperature and your coolant level. But the ones that are emissions related, they're non-programmable. You can't say, hey, uh, don't derate me or don't shut me down if this code's active. It's hard programmed into the software that if you get these codes, it's going to shut you down or it's going to derate you depending on the code, especially DPF codes. They will shut you down. Some of them will let you run 60 seconds between shutdowns, which is actually quite dangerous. I mean, think if you're pulling a hill in heavy traffic and you're in a truck or an RV or a bus and it keeps shutting down on you. That could be quite dangerous. But manufacturers said, we don't really care. Um, we're mostly more concerned about the EPA standards. So that's when they started punishing uh, the drivers and the owners of these vehicles with the D-rate feature, also the shutdown feature. So hopefully you learned a little bit about what a D-rate is in this video. Uh, we talked about the history of it, what it does, and if you can get around it or if you can't get around it, especially in emissions example. So hopefully you understand more about the D-rate fe feature. Thanks for watching.